Hello, my name is Erdemon Lalue, and today I would like to introduce to you the concept of thinking together. In this methodology, there are seven steps. Step number one is when you express your opinion, become the property of the whole group, not individual expressing them. In other words, it's like taking a gift, putting it in the middle of a table, and standing back. You have to be detached from your opinion in order to truth to emerge. And Just imagine you're going to somebody's home and take a box of chocolate there. Okay? You don't say, oh, don't eat this one. Don't give it to him. Don't put it in the fridge. Okay? They can do whatever they like with that box of chocolate. Probably you're going to receive it 13 weeks later <laughs> back again. But you believe it there and stand back. And there is a reason why I say stand back. This is rule number one. Very simple to say, extremely difficult people to do, but the key for keep working together, this is, this is fundamental to this process. Another important step in this process is the ability to listen with genuine respect, without prejudice, superiority, or mistrust to views expressed by others. People don't listen to one another. You know, because uh, Dennis wants to say something, uh, she, Sinead wants to say something, and Sinead thinking about what she wants to say, she doesn't listen to Dennis. And sometimes, you know, people repeat the same thing, not because they just repeated the, the things, because they were not listening, they were thinking and just to say the same thing afterwards. Therefore, what I do, I say, okay, Dennis, you say your things, I take it from Dennis, I gave it to Willie, because Willie puts his finger up, and I say, Willie, what did Dennis say? He has to say what Dennis has said. Then ask Dennis, Dennis, is it what uh, the Willie said? Is it yes? Good, go forward. We do that exercise because sometimes you have a problem with it. And if actually people come to a tremendous amount of realization that usually don't listen, find it very difficult, even form because you had to formulate, somebody spoke for 10 minutes in three or four minutes and say, look, he said this. They could have to really listen during that time. Extremely effective. Do not feel hurt if somebody opposes your opinion. It will not help you and it will not help the process. The truth will stay hidden. My question is, why do people stay quiet at the meetings? They don't want to feel hurt. I'm ha totally happy when people don't want to say anything because they have anything to say. That's perfectly okay. They say, look, I've got no comment to make. Okay, but just don't say anything for certain reasons. One should not belittle the thoughts of others. It's not helpful. The question is, how do we, how do we belittle the thoughts of others? And what harm does it do? Any suggestion? Ignore. Ignore body language, yes. Gestures. Sometimes, you know, just dismissing it or uh, being sarcastic or saying, this, you know, the stupid comment, basically very, very straightforward. The other one, as you said, it's uh, gestures, you know, rolling your eyes up or... Uh, sighs or, uh, you know, smile at somebody else that, you know, well, your man is at it again, you know, that, that kind of things. And also, sometimes even worse than this, on the surface is, oh, that's a fantastic idea, very good, inside myself, what a stupid idea, you know? Even that is, you, we are belittling thoughts of other people because it has to be really sincere is what, what, what we say. Every message has got two components, what we say and how we say it. Basically, we have to express our thoughts freely, frankly, and openly, but mutual respect and trust. Firstly, is uh, what we say, the content, and the other one, how we say it. And these two have to be in harmony. They have to go together. You cannot do one without the other. Extremely simple to say, very difficult to do, because lots of people find it very difficult to combine these two. But this is a key to thinking together, one of the keys. And also, how we say things actually is much, much more, more important than what we say. We should not insist on our opinion. It will cause this conflict, and the truth will stay hidden. I'm not saying that we should not express our thoughts with conviction, with uh, commitment, 
express it. Maybe if you feel that nobody has heard it, say it again. And if you feel you haven't uh, heard it, say it again. But insisting on opinion is going to cause problems. Truth often emerges from clashing opinions. Dispassionately seek for truth and adopt it when you find it. Separate the opinion from the personality. Clash of opinions will bring that spark of truth. Therefore, we should clash opinions. Therefore, we stand back. This is what you earlier on you were saying. You have to, when you're clashing opinions, should be perfectly okay to clash opinions. And we have to understand clashing opinions. But you stand back and then when they see the truth, I'll see that one and I'll take it. Therefore, basically, we have to separate the opinions from the person or my opinion from me. If I am not capable of separating my opinion from myself, then I'm going to have a problem because I'm going to, this is me and this is my opinion. And uh, then it's a detached from his opinion, throw his opinion at me, <laughs> and I'm going to get very hurt. Even hits this one, it's going to hit me as well. And I'm going to get very hurt. Then become personality clashes. These seven rules are very helpful, but they will not be effective unless they're accompanied by some inner qualities. Qualities such as sincerity, purity of motive, humility, and patience. Combination of the rules and inner qualities will help us to create a better culture, arrive at better decisions, and create an environment that is conducive to both individual and collective growth. Thank you very much for watching us. Goodbye.